are you brand new to Power BI and you just want to learn how to build some basic visuals? I'm going to show you how. Let's go. So this video, I'm going to take this Excel file that's got four columns of data and turn it into these charts. And along the way, I'm going to reference other videos I've done where we can delve into things in more depth. But this is just a quick starter video for people who are brand new to Power BI and they're just stuck. Okay, where do you even start? So before we even start this, if you haven't downloaded Power BI yet or you have no idea what it is, then go and check out my absolute starter video of, you know, what is Power BI? A little link will pop up. And again, I'll put links in the description. All right. So let's start with a brand new workbook. So file, and then I'm just going to start a new blank report. My advice to you, if you're a brand new user, is to change two default settings. Now, I guess if you're watching this video a year in the future, the default setting will have changed, I am guessing. But for now, you need to change or turn on a preview feature called on object interaction, and that'll really help you out. So how do you do that? Well, you go to File up in the top left, you go to Options and Settings, and then Options. And down the left-hand side, there'll be a preview section, and that's where you need to go and tick on object interaction. It's just a nicer experience for people beginning. Okay, so under Preview Features, on object interaction, tick that, and you'll probably have to close Power BI and reopen it. But before you do, also go to Report Settings and untick Always Arrange Data for Me. It's just a, it's, it's meant to be helpful and then it suggests visuals, but in my experience, it just causes more grief than it's worth. You can turn it on whenever you want, but turn it off by default, okay? The other thing that you will turn off, but don't turn it off yet, but you will turn it off, is under data load, okay, you turn off this auto date time. Don't turn it off yet for this video, we need that. But check out my video on calendar tables, you really need a calendar, okay? So go and check that video out, little link pop up, check out the notes. Um, you need it to do financial year, days, um, proper date analysis, all this sort of stuff, okay? So this is like a helper just for when you're getting started. Good enough for today's lesson, all right? So we'll leave that ticked for now, but in the future, turn that off and go and watch my video on how you create and use your own calendar table. Okay. So we're gonna go and get that Excel data, okay? And to avoid any grief, I'm just gonna close this Excel file down. If your Excel file is saved on, um, OneDrive or SharePoint, then there's a different technique. Again, go check out that video about how to connect to an Excel file on OneDrive or SharePoint. This is just an Excel file on your network or C drive. Okay, this button here, which is the same as this one. So we're just gonna bring this in, and this is not a lesson about Power Query. Okay, this is just, we're gonna talk about the visualization part. We're just grabbing some data and bringing it in. So here's the sheet. I'm going to right click on it and say transform. Now to find out more about Power Query, I've got a whole Power Query playlist, but even like a little beginner video about what is Power Query, what can it do? It's just the best feature ever. It also lives in Excel. All right. It's amazing for tidying up your data. Now I'm lucky. My data is already set up nicely, but if you've got messy data with extra headers and things, you need to use these buttons and filters and various other tricks to actually get your data into the right shape. Often data is laid out like months in different columns and that's where unpivoting comes in. Again, I've got a little video on that. But for now, I'm just gonna rename this as my sales data. And I've got units sold and price per unit, but really what I want is the sales amount. Now, when you get a bit more advanced, you can actually write a formula 
in DAX, which is, comes a bit later in the process, to multiply these two columns. And it doesn't take up as much memory. But if you're really only dealing with small amounts of data and this works for you, then go for it. Because what I'm going to do is just control click to select both columns and multiply them together. Okay, so add a column, standard multiply. And here's my values. I can double click on the heading and call it sales amount. All right, that'll do. A little video call about sum x, that's the DAX function. I've done a little video on that, talking about this, this concept. So again, go and check that video out, the sum x function in DAX. But we're good, we've got what we need, okay? I don't really need the time here, so I'm gonna change that to just a purely a date. And again, look, I'm doing it here, but it happened back here as well, that the types got changed. So I'm just gonna do it at this stage to save adding an extra step. Not that it really matters that much. Okay, replace the current one. So there we go, that's looking like a nice date. This should all look good. Perfect, okay, home, close and apply. And this data is now gonna get sucked out of the Excel file and loaded into Power BI, ready for you to build um, whatever visuals you want, all right? So you have a little bit of a different layout if you've got on object interactions selected. You know, here's, the, here's your basics. With your date hierarchy, that sort of time intelligence box still ticked, you get this automatic grouping of year, quarter, month, and day. Um, it's okay, but it's no substitute for your own calendar table. But let's start building some stuff, all right? Um, let's just go and tick sales amount. It should come in, and if you click on auto suggest. If you'd left that on, it would suggest you only clicked one value, so it should, probably should be a card. Okay, but if you don't have it on, it generally comes in as a column chart, and you can go and change which type of visual you want. The card is a, is a good option. I'm even going to go for the new card visual, which has got fancier features. But rather than just doing this, okay, ticking things, you really should create measures. Now, I know this isn't this, this session is really talking about the visuals, but honestly, do yourself a massive favor and make your report robust from the beginning by writing a measure for every single number you display on a page. It future-proofs your report, okay? Just, just trust me, okay, it does. All right, so here we go. We're gonna go right-click on sales data, new measure. This isn't tricky. This is just gonna be called sales dollar, okay? Here we go. I'm just gonna zoom in with control and mouse wheel. All right, this is gonna be called sales, and then the dollar sign. And all it is is the sum of the sales data, sales amount column, okay? Perfect, press enter, click on the little dollar sign here and make it zero decimals. Okay, and then rather than sum of sales amount, I can come over here, and look, I've got a little measure, sales dollar. See, it's over here on the right as well, sales dollar. I can just click that. And it's just a neater way. I can reuse this measure. I can call it whatever I want. I can change the measure if something changes in the future and all my visuals will update. It's just beautiful. Okay, so there's a nice little starting point. Okay, so when you're building visuals, just set the scene. So give some context to people. What are we looking at here? What's the total amount? And then you want to sort of navigate down into trends and comparisons and those types of things, useful data. I think we too often just present dashboards that show things, but don't actually give it any context. You know, this is day one, this is starting, but have a think about that, okay? So here we go, we've got our card visual. And we can tidy that up a little bit more in a second. But then I'm just gonna add, um, a, let's go for a matrix, okay, matrix visual. And in that matrix, I am going to put the product name and I'll put the sales dollar again. Excellent. 
but I'd also like to put the maybe the average price. Okay, maybe that's an important metric that we're really interested in. So I've got the price per unit here. Again, you could just tick it and it drops in and I don't want the sum. I want to go right click on it down here and change it to the average, which is the, it's not necessarily the right average, but not that that really matters for today. Again, you might do want to do a weighted average, but bear with me. So I'm just going to go right click, new measure. Okay. And I'm going to do a quantity measure first. Quantity sold equals the sum of the units sold. Okay. And then my average price, which is essentially then the weighted average, is going to be just the sales divided by the quantity. So average price per unit. Or let's just call it average price. Let's say our our audience is aware of that concept equals, and you can divide the square bracket sales dollar comma square bracket quantity sold. Okay. And again, that's going to be a dollar sign, but this will be two decimal points. So this is how you build your visuals. Okay. You add things like this, and then you can come onto here and you can go click on this thing and you could add another value or rather than all those clicks sometimes just over on the right hand side here it's quicker just to tick average price okay and there it is right a little bit of formatting sometimes you can double click on visuals to make them editable and you can then click on things and maybe format them a little bit you can right click and maybe change the headings to bold the double click puts a blue border and allows you to format stuff in when on object interaction is enabled, which is pretty cool. But I'm going to go over here. I am going to change the layout and style to minimal. And I want to change the row height a little bit, which is under grid options and then row padding, which is a strange name. But I'll go for five on those and make this a little bit taller. You can make the columns a little bit wider. Okay, let me click away now. Click on this. And by clicking on the column heading, it's now sorted. So again, make it nice and easy. And then I just want to add some um, data bars. So I come over here, right click on sales, conditional formatting, data bar. And I'm going to make that a, don't go for the darkest blues and darkest colors if you can help it. I, I find they can be in, in your face a little bit. Although simple black bars for things can be useful, but not for data bars because it'll wipe out the number. You'll see what I mean in a second. I'm actually going to go for the lightest blue. Okay, click OK. And there's my data bars. And for average price, I'm going to do a similar thing. And I'm going to go uh, conditional formatting data bars. And I think I'll go for a maybe a light orange. Now this color scheme, okay, you can tweak yourself. It's under view and you can pick a different color scheme with default colors, or you can even customize and build your own color scheme. It's pretty straightforward. Okay. Right. Awesome. Now, given this is sales and this is sales, I'm actually going to come into here, double click. Okay. Click on this one, right click and change the color to be blue. Okay. Just so that Maybe I'll go a slightly darker blue for that. But you're getting the idea that now associates things. So try and associate colors with each other. And then I'd like to see the sort of trend over time. So I'd like to see maybe my quantity sold. Give that a little tick. And I see that by year um, and by month. Okay, so in here now, is a little trend, okay, which is pretty cool. Okay, now the issue with the built-in calendar is you've only got the long names. So this is another reason you need your own calendar table. Okay, um, I'm stuck with that. I don't want this word month. and I don't want that word quantity sold. So again, you can double click. You can right click on it and say delete. You can double click, right click on it and say delete. You can double click on the heading and say just um, 
units sold v prior year. Okay. Oh, okay. So how am I going to get the prior year? Well, right click on my measures, new measure. And again, this is bringing in a bit of context about stuff. equals. And here we bring in a little bit of fancy DAX. Don't worry about it. But again, I've got a whole section on DAX and the data model. A little video link will pop up and you can go check that out. Okay. Also, I've referred to these things in the calendar video as well, I think. So calculate the quantity sold, but we want to look back a year. So we're going to adjust this to look back. Now, with a calendar table, it's nice and straightforward. With this table, it's a little bit weirder. Transaction date, there you go, dot date. I wouldn't ever build this formula without a calendar table. I just don't trust it, okay? But just for demo purposes, so transaction date, um, minus one, comma, year. So there's a little formula, and we're gonna click on the comma, because it's a, just a number. All right, and then with this chart, we can simply change it to a column and line. And then in the line box down here, I can click the add data and we can go prior year quantity sold. All right. So this is now comparing against prior year, but I only wanna have a look at this year. So let's add a slicer. So look, we'll add a little slicer. Here's the slicer visual. And we'll put the year in there. And I'll move this over. And it is size and style. Sorry, over here. Slicer settings is a tile, which gives you the nice big buttons. You can grab those over. Put this up here somewhere. Okay. Awesome. But now we've got prior year sales, I, I just want to click on 2024. And here we can see it and a bit more formatting involved. OK, so we click on this visual. We'll make the line again. You can double click if you want to do it this way. Right click on the line, make the line gray, maybe. And the nice thing is down here, you've also got it moving and you can say shade the area in. So when you click on different sections like the columns, this side panel jumps to the right section if you click on the heading. Okay, and I'm going to call this units sold. Okay, which is not the same as sales. So I'm actually going to use a third color here. So I'm going to and try and keep things to about three colors on a page. So I'm going to go to my columns. I'm going to pick maybe a, I don't want to make it too fancy. So I'm just going to go for a simple dark color here. Okay. I don't want to too many different colors on my page. So there's my unit sold. Um, maybe I'll go for, maybe I'll go for a proper black. Okay. So that'll be unit sold. And then prior year is in a light gray. Okay. And that's a pretty decent you know, a little comparison. I can turn the data labels on. You can do, you know, there's all sorts of options. Data labels on, looks a bit cluttered. So I'm only gonna, I'm gonna turn off the data labels for the prior year, off, okay. So it's just a bit of context. When I click away, okay, we've got this sort of thing. But you could also not have the legend. And instead, if we go to the title section, turn the subtitle on, and make that V prior year, okay? And make the text that sort of lighter gray and put a little divider on and I'm gonna make that quite a light gray as well. Okay, I could then actually get rid of this legend. So double click, right click, delete the legend. And then my title itself is giving me what I need. And then one last little thing, all right? Just over here, I want to do a small multiples. So what do I mean by that? Well, historically, if I copy paste control C, control V, and I just change this back to a, or change it to a stacked column, okay, rather than a line, and I get rid of the prior year, oh, I can untick it here. So 
So there's my sort of unit sold. And maybe I'll change this one back to, um, let's change this to the sales dollar. Okay, so there's my sales dollar by month. And again, I actually want it to show me, you know, by, by product, for example. So if I tick product, you get this sort of thing. All right, it's not great. And if I turn the, the legends off currently, but if I turn the legend on, you know, it's, it's not easy to read. Let me go and turn the legend on. Right, it's just up and down, what's going on? Is that a good visual? Maybe not. So maybe consider putting the legend into the small multiples instead. And now you get mini charts. And I'm gonna make these um, little area charts, okay? So there's a little area chart. And I also want to add the average price in there as well, okay? So the average price is gonna go on the secondary axis. Okay, so I'm actually gonna drag this into the secondary axis. I'm gonna change the secondary axis so that they starts at zero. I don't want these um, labels everywhere. So again, you can come down and you can turn the data labels off and the line color for the average price needs to be that light orange because that's what I've been using. Okay, there we go, we could do this. And my small multiple layout, if I zoom back up, sometimes right clicking and saying collapse all categories is good. Okay, the small multiples layout might be, um, just one row. So one row, and I've got mm, five products, I think. So I'm just gonna put this down the bottom of my screen. Okay, and again, you could just change the heading to get rid of the, the legend. You could say unit uh, sales dollar, let's do it now. Okay, it's pretty easy to click on. Okay, sales dollar. And average price. Okay, and you can change the color of average price to match. And you don't necessarily need this legend anymore. And if I go back up here, let me just collapse this a second. And I can make this a lot longer. I don't really need the axes down the sides. So again, double click. I'm just gonna click on this, right click, delete. You get the idea, this is how you build the visuals, all right? Double click on this. Let's just go over here to the right hand side. So if I click on this visual, down the side here, it's the secondary axis and the values can go off. It's just the trends. You know, we can see that the average price doesn't change much, but check this out. If I click on 2023, Whoa, what happened with Mocha, okay? Something drastically, but the sales didn't, the sales dollar value didn't, didn't switch. So maybe, let's check this out. This is where the exploration happens, right? Maybe I'll swap out sales dollar for quantity sold. Ah, okay, and then if I'm using quantity sold, I need to be consistent in my colors. So again, I'm gonna to go to lines I am gonna to go to the line for quantity sold, and I'm gonna change the color to be black. All right. So hopefully, okay, that, those, cl those clicks, that process, hopefully that gives you a suggestion about what you can do. Also, you need to add context, okay? So comparing against prior year, for example, or against a target, or against each other. And then the visuals are all interactive, so you can click on this. But I don't want this chart to have this highlighting, so I'm gonna click on this visual, go to Format, Edit Interactions, and then say 
filter this chart. Okay, so when this chart is clicked, it just filters that one, okay, rather than the highlighting, which gives it that sort of original ghosted outline, which I didn't really want. So that's better for me. Okay, I prefer that, and then turn off edit interactions. And then, you know, with, within the card visual, you can add multiple values. You could add quantity as well as another measure, as a grand total, if that was useful. But try and be a bit insightful about stuff. I'm not saying this is a great dashboard by any means. You can also just break stuff up a little bit. Okay, maybe this chart comes up here and goes across. All right, this one might come over here and have a bit of space underneath it. And maybe, you know, you, you want this to be something that's quite different. Maybe it's some different bits of information. So actually adding some simple lines, insert, shape, line, okay, comes in as a horizontal line. Weirdly, shape and style, you go to fill, and you think you change that? No, you go to border, okay, and make that like a medium-ish gray. Control C, Control V for another line. This line, I am going to make tall, so I'm going to grab the corner, I am going to rotate it. Okay, so here we go. Uh, rotation, uh, 90 degrees, which is really silly that you have to do that. And again, make it as narrow as you can. Check it over here. And maybe this is a little separator. And we can have another card value in there that's something useful. But use white space, lines, make sure things line up nicely. Three colors on a page is what you're really looking for, you know, ideally. Should my slicer be black when this is black? Does that make me associate them and try and work out if they're linked in some way? Okay, be consistent in your color choices. Within the card visual, you can do fancy stuff like reference labels now. So I could add into here the, I don't know, the quantity sold. As a little sub layer, you can change the sort of layout of these things. You can change the the sort of padding and how things are laid out. So there's all sorts of options, but that's just getting started. All right, there's lots more to it, but that's your basic starting point. Hope you find it useful. I hope the user interface and those sorts of things you're now a bit more familiar with. And it's a case of having a play and just being consistent and simple. Try to avoid the pie chart scenario, you know, if you have a pie chart for sales by product name, okay, it takes up a lot of space. It's quite difficult to look at the different ratios. This is sorted in order. I can see espresso, all right? If I click on espresso, I can see that sort of, you know, for 2024, there's a bit of a trend downwards going on here. Um, you can see from this as well, we're under budget from prior year, whereas latte sales are above what we did for, so not against budget, against prior year performance. So this sort of visuals are generally easier to understand and read than the pie chart options. And again, a pie chart instantly adds three or four or five colors, which you want to try to avoid if you can. All right, hope you find that useful. Catch you in the next video.